<laughs> he's like that. He's my backup dancer. <laughs> Okay, so you guys are my, um, basically my test group because I have like massive fear of public speaking. So this is me just jumping in because Rabbi Shaltiel asked me um, to do a shir once a week. So I'll just share a little bit on the parasha. Basically, so this is um, a book that I wrote that parallels the parasha called Light of the Infinite. Yeah, so it starts talking about how at every moment in our lives, we're caught between sort of sometimes the easiest choice and something maybe more selfish. And then the harder choice, which is like giving to other people, going outside of yourself, doing favors. Melech Shlomo, he talks about everything is created zelu madze. So there's like a, there's a balance with everything in this world. And in this parasha, we're talking about, we, we read the story of Yaakov Ve'esav. And v'acharei kan yotzei achiv ve'edo ochezet ve'ekev esav v'yiklash mo Yaakov. So here we read that his name comes from holding the ekev, holding this heel. And so that's why his name Yaakov. And we learn the, the Gur Aryeh actually talks about that we see that esav is, represents the Yitzhak Ara and Yaakov represents the Yitzhak Tov. But it's not a personality development. It's not something that happened through time or once they were born, it's actually in the embryonic stage, we see with their mom, Rivka, she's walking towards something with Kudusha, mm -hmm. place of learning, Yaakov's trying to get out. And when she's passing something that opposes holiness or idol worshiping, a place like that, then uh, Esau's trying to get out. So we see that this is actually in the embryonic stage. It's this sort of cosmic force that penetrates our own lives and keeps repeating in our own lives because it's not just a story of Yaakov and Esau, something that we read, but it's actually, it plays out in our own lives at all times. So we're trying to fight against Esau's representing that which is opposing holiness, the connection that we could have in this world with Hashem. So the Esau part of us, the Yitzhak is always trying to get us, distract us. Okay, do this, this is easier. This is a distraction from this thing. And it's hard to connect, that's the whole point. So the idea is, and also as we see, we're kind of pulling the heel and we're trying to get to the Rosh. So as this story plays out, Yaakov turned, he's, he's named Yisrael. And in the same way in Mitzrayim, Mitzar, this constriction. So throughout, as we're reading the Torah, we see throughout life, we're in this constricted state and we're in our own Mitzrayims at all times. We're just fighting through these different sort of narrowness and different ways of feeling trapped almost. And we're trying to reach our own promised land. So we're trying to reach Yisrael. And when Yaakov does that, we see that he's named Yisrael, he's, he's reached that promised land. And the other thing that we read, or the story that we know with the lentil soup, with, with uh, Esav, he, he walks in and he sees Yaakov, he's making this lentil soup. And it's actually representing, sort of commemorating Avram who died, and Esav in Leshit um, Rabbah, it actually says that Esav comes in and he's saying, well, why are you doing this? Like, even this Zaken, he's like giving kavod to Avram, he's saying this Tzadik, even he, is mortal, he's facing death after walking with Hashem, he's dying. And Yaakov is, he's saying, okay, but look, look at all the things he did in this world and all the merits he has in the next world. And of course, that all the, I mean, all of the world, Abrahamic faith is following what Avram brought into this world. So if you're talking about Aliyah Neshama, what is a bigger Aliyah Neshama than Avraham and everything that we're doing at all times? But Esau didn't see it like that, he saw it if he's doing that and he's still dying, then there's no point in life. And I will trade anything. I will trade the future and I will trade forever for a bowl of soup. Because the only thing that matters is here right now. In Sefer Yemiyahu, it says, don't mourn for the dead, mourn for those that are moving towards death. So what does that mean? It means that Esav, with this mindset where there's no next world, Esav is his whole life is obsessed with his own mortality. So he's obsessed with doing whatever he can do to satisfy the here and now. And that's why he turned out red, because it symbolizes blood. He was a killer, he was a hunter. And he just wanted to just do whatever pleases him. That's what he was obsessed with at that exact moment. There's actually a story, There's a, it's a Native American parable. This Cherokee elder is talking to his, 
his grandson and he's saying, there's, I have, what he's saying in, in my own life, I have these two wolves. There's an evil wolf and he represents hatred and jealousy and all the bad things. And then there's a good wolf and that represents love, harmony, joy, and they're fighting at all times. And he said, this, these two wolves, they exist in everybody. They exist in you too. So the grandson looks to the grandfather and he goes, well, which wolf is going to win? And the grandfather said, the one that you feed. And it means a lot because it's saying that these, the evil, the Yitzhar Hara, it's coming to take us away all the time from our connection to the Devekut to Hashem. And you have to, you can't feed that because if you do, it becomes even more hungry. And in the Talmud, it says Hashem will lead you down the path that you choose. So it means if you're choosing that path that opposes the Sitra Achar or the Yitzhar Hara, Hashem's, he'll help you in that. You know what I mean? So you need to continuously make the right choice. Um, and there's actually, there's The Doors, this album that I used to listen to. Jim Morrison, he reminds me of Asaph because he's yelling, he says, uh, he's kind of making fun of me. He, he's playing the show and in the middle he stops, he goes, petition the Lord with prayer? You can't petition the Lord with prayer. And he's basically making fun of, like in the same way, he's like, what are you talking about? You think you can affect this world? That you could do something and ask for the mercy of Hashem and connect to Hashem? Like, no. And then he goes on to say, the whole, you know, this, the whole house is going to burn down and I'm going to have my fun while it lasts. And the whole crowd's like cheering and going nuts. And it actually, it reminds me of Esau because he's saying you can't connect. Like all we have is the here and now. And if you look at it from that perspective, you may as well just have the most fun that you could have because it's all gone in a second anyway. So that's the whole thing. We really have to connect mm -hmm. to the, the truth and have this Tveka to Hashem. And that way we can oppose and we can move away from the Esau parts of us that come up and really connect to to Israel and reach our own promised land. Shabbat shalom. Amen. Amen. What's